In this video, I wanna show you how to dynamically filter data coming from an API. So I've got some products here. This is coming in from an API call and I have two different dimensions I wanna filter on, the category and the brand. And if you just click on these, you can see we filter this down and we've got Apple and Samsung. Let's just bring it down to Samsung right there. And you can add more in or clear everything out, and then you've got the whole list. All right, so let's jump into Flutterflow and see how this is built. So here's the page, but let's first jump into our API calls to see what the data looks like. So we're using this dummy JSON API, and if you just go over to this URL here, dummyjson.com, you check out this API. This is just a little resource that provides a bunch of endpoints for you to query when you're developing apps. So we've got products and carts, etc. And this is the endpoint we're using, products. So this is the URL right here, and let's just test it and see what our data looks like. Okay, you can see we get back a products property with an array of objects, which are just each individual product right here. So you can see this first one is an iPhone 9 with a description. And here are the two properties we'll be filtering on, brand and category. Now, to make this easier, I've selected some JSON paths. And if you don't know what JSON paths are, we've, we've got a video tutorial you can check out right here. But JSON path is a query language that allows you to filter the data coming back from API responses. Because normally, you don't want just the whole thing. You want little bits. See, I want this array of products. And this didn't just send me an array of products. It has a products property with an array in it. So I have to filter down to this. And so right here, I've got this and I just grab these from the recommended tab where you just click selected, and then it'll add into your selected JSON paths, which then will be available in Flutterflow. I also grabbed some other JSON paths just for designing the app in Flutterflow. Okay, that's all we need to know here. Okay, let's jump back into the editor, take a second to look at how this is built. So here, we've got two checkbox groups and we've added in the options manually. You can of course set them from a variable. So if these are dynamic, you could select a JSON path and set it to there. So that these are updating based on the data coming from your backend. But here I've just hard coded them in here. It is important that these are identical to those property names coming in from the API call. So if you saw before in our API call, we can just go take a look at this real quick. We can see that category here, the smartphones look like this and we're gonna be using these property names later and it's a lowercase category. Okay, so two check boxes with the values you wanna filter on right here. Then we just got a list view with a backend query on it, calling that API call. Now, the real magic happens over when we're generating our dynamic children. That is, we've made a query back here to our products and we're getting back from that, that big, JSON response that we saw when we just tested our API. So we're getting back this monster right here. Well, of course, we don't want everything. We want to filter through that. So let's go into here. So we've we've got that big dump of data from our backend query, and now we want to generate dynamic children. But which children do we want? Okay, well, let's first put in a variable name. We'll just call this, these are gonna be our products, so we'll call it that. But what do we actually want? That is, what out of that big dumped JSON response do we wanna generate children from? So we're gonna be doing two things here. First, we're gonna be telling Flutterflow, what do we wanna be generating our children from? And second, how to filter those children. So there's two things we want here because we could generate children based on anything from that response. So if we go look at this again and we test it, maybe we wanna generate children based on all the images of products. You can imagine this if we've got some sort of like image carousel and we wanna generate all of those images, children, then we wanna reference these images. But no, we wanna generate a child for each one of these objects in this array of products. So we have to tell Flutterflow, hey, that's where we want our children to come from. So let's call these products and let's come in here. And here, same icon from our API, that's our big dump response. And so that's what we want. Of course, we don't want everything. We want to stipulate our JSON body. But once again, right here, we're not really doing anything, right? We've just said, oh, that's the whole JSON response. We want that path we set up before. And you can see all the ones we saved back from when we set up the API call. And we want that 
products. Okay, great. So now we're generating the children. That's the first step. We're telling Flutterflow to generate all these children. So let's just see this first. So confirm, just telling us that we're gonna generate all these children. So beautiful. We can see that ghosted out children here just to indicate to us that, hey, you're generating children. So when you actually run this or test this, you're gonna be able to see all those. Okay, great. That's the first step. The second step is to set up the actual filtering. So we've got our products here and let's go back in and we've got this available options right here. And we want to say, hey, we want to filter through these list items. We don't want everything. We want it to correspond to like whatever we've checked right here. And we can see right here, we have a filter condition. So the big picture is this. Flutterflow is going to go through each of the items in our list of products. So each of those objects, and it's gonna check for some condition. And so if this condition that we set up here is true for each one of the items, then we'll see it. If it's false, we won't see it. So maybe we were on just a Samsung products page. We could set the condition to say brand equals Samsung. And so if it's true, it would show it. If it's false, it would not. Okay, cool. But we've kind of got a more complex setup because we're not gonna hard code things in say this item's brand equals Samsung. No, it's coming from these widgets. So how would we do that? Well, let's come into our filter condition and of course we wanna check for conditions, so let's twirl this open. And we don't want one condition because we have multiple conditions, namely the category and the brand. So we want multiple conditions. Okay, beautiful. And of course, if you have other things you wanna filter on, you could just add it right here. So before we set this, let's think through this logic right here because this can get confusing once we have multiple nesting of conditions going on. We had one condition right here, but now we're saying we want both of these to be true. And if both of these are true, then this will be true and then it'll show it. These both have to be true for this to be true. So for instance here, if it's a smartphone and the brand is Apple, then it would be true, then we would show it. Okay, so let's set this up first with category. So let's click in here and you might think that we'd come down to widget state and do something with that, you know, check if the category of the item we're looking at, the product we're looking at is inside this. And that's true, we'll get there, but we can't do that yet because of how checkbox widgets state works in an app. So when your page first loads, checkboxes start out as null. Then when you check them, they will be a list of strings right here, namely smartphones, laptops, whatever you have. And then when you uncheck them, they'll be an empty list. So if we tried to do this right when it loaded, it would be looking for an item in a list when this isn't even a list, it's null. So we'll do that widget state thing, but first we have to check for the null and empty list condition. And I wanna show you a little debugging technique I use all the time to figure out what a widget state is. So let's just cancel out of here and come into our functions. And I've got a function written here called widget state log. And it's going to return us a string. And the arguments, the things that we pass into it, is going to be a list. And it is nullable, and that's important. It can be null. Because we're gonna pass in to this function, our checkbox widget, and we're going to see what the state of it is. So here's our function. It takes in a list of strings. It's called widget state. That's just what we set up here. And I'm just simply returning the widget state, but turning it into a string, just a built-in Dart function. Great. So now we got to print this somewhere. So let's just grab our title right here. Let's set it for a function widget state log, and we are going to set it from a variable, and we're gonna grab that widget state, which is from our category. Beautiful, confirm that, Conf and set a default variable value. I'll just call it products, and we're good to go. So let's test this. So here our page is loaded. We've got our function running here, which is telling us the widget state of this one that we passed in. And we can see that it's null. When we click one, we can see that it's a list with one item, multiple items. And then when we close everything out, then we've got an empty list. And if you think about it, what we wanna do is when it loads and it's null, we wanna show everything. 
And when it's an empty list, we also want to show everything. So we got to check for these conditions. And of course, you can make this function accept any data type you want. And if you just click on the widget state, it'll tell you in the parentheses here what type of data it is. Okay, so let's just clear this out. And now we have to figure out if the widget is null or an empty list. So if we go over to our functions and we have all this code in the description, I've got this is null function and we want the return type to be a Boolean. We want it to return true or false because remember we're looking for a true or false condition and we're passing in a list because that's what our widget is. And it has to be nullable because that's what we're checking for. So here we just have a simple if block. We're saying if the widget state, that's what we're passing in right here, is null or the widget state is empty. And this is just a property on lists in Dart. If either of those are true, then we're just gonna return true. Otherwise we'll return false. Because remember filtering through the list, a true value will show it and a false value will hide it. So if it's null, that means nothing has been checked in our checkboxes, well, then we wanna show it. And if they've been unchecked, we also wanna show it. So that's why we're turning true here. All right, great. So now we're finally ready to finish up our filtering. So let's go back into our list view, into our products, and we've got a JSON path of our products. We wanna filter through these items, and we want to check for multiple conditions. The first condition will be checking this category. And we want to first see if it's null. So we're gonna say, if it's null, then do something. If it's not null, that is, if someone has checked something right here, then we wanna do some other logic, namely, see if that item is in here, has the property of smartphones. Okay, so we need a conditional block here. And the first one we're gonna check for is that null value. So let's come into here, go into our functions. We've got our is null function, and we wanna check for our widget state of our category. Beautiful. So there we go. That's our custom function passing in that category. Great, so let's confirm this. And we wanna just say, if this condition is true, so if this returns true, we want the value to be true. This might feel a little bit weird, but it's just because we're using a custom function. If we were checking for a condition without using a custom function, sometimes this is a useful way to apply an opposite statement like in here over the whole condition. Okay, awesome. Finally, now that we've checked for null, that is to say, now we know there's something in this list, the user has checked something, then we can now check if each individual item is whatever's checked. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, just like before, we want to check if the thing is in that list of the widget state. So we're going into category here. We're saying list contains item. And what do we want? Oh, we got some different stuff here. So remember what we're doing. When we're filtering, we're checking each item of the products. So each product we're going through and we're checking these conditions. And this item in the list here is that whole object that has a title property and price and brand and category. That's this whole thing. But we don't want everything. We're just checking for one property in the object and that is the category. Okay, beautiful. So let's confirm all that. Confirm and we're done with our first condition checking against this category checkboxes. Now we just need to check for our second condition. So let's just come in here and copy our variable and paste it in. And let's just change this over to our brand one. So now we're not checking for null on the category one, but for the brand. And we're checking if the list contains not that list, but the brand list, if that contains our item. And remember, we're not the whole object, we just want the brand, beautiful. Confirm, 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 confirm. All right, let's go test this out. Awesome, we've got our whole list here with nothing checked. Let's look at just our smartphones and just 
Apple smartphones. And when we uncheck everything, we've got our whole list back. So our logic is working perfectly. Now I know this one got kind of technical, but that's the power of flutter flow is that everything is exposed to you. So if you're having trouble, please leave a comment below or contact our support. We'd love to help and we'll see you in the next video.